Hi, I'm Dr. Mike Natola, and I'd like to welcome you to this episode of Inside Dentistry's Product Talk. We are on location in Lexington, South Carolina, in the office of Dr. Frankie Scholl. Frankie is teaching faculty at the Pankey Institute and is an Inside Dentistry board member. And today we're going to be discussing GC's Fuji Automix LC. Frankie, thank you so much for having us into your office today. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate you being here. Well, it's nice to be here as well. And I'll tell you what, when I think of glass ionomers and resin modified glass ionomers, my mind goes to GC. I mean, this is a company that has just dominated the market for those products over the years. Has that Without been your doubt. perception as well? I totally agree. Almost every glass ionomer I've used over the years has been through GC. Now, most glass ionomers or even resin modified glass ionomer restorative materials, they either need to be hand mixed or triturated. And hand mixing, that's a little bit of a pain, but the bigger problem is it incorporates air bubbles into the material that can actually weaken it. Um, and triturators, the thing is, there's a lot of dentists now who don't have many triturators in their office because they've moved away from amalgam and started going towards direct composites. And so dentists started asking GC for an auto mix version uh, of this material. And amazingly, GC listened and have come out with this really clever auto mix delivery device. They also took the opportunity to kind of reinvent uh, the delivery unit. You can see it's something that's been designed for use with small hands. So whether it's a, a dental assistant or, or somebody who's got a smaller hand, you don't have to reach quite so far as you used to. And you can see the mixing tip. It almost looks like a mini impression gun, if you will. And their, their whole intent and purpose was to make it easier to deliver the restorative material to where you need it. You've had a chance to use this for a while. What, uh, what do you think about their design? Well, just like you said, I think uh, a lot of thought went into the design of the delivery system. And it's always been a challenge with most glass ionomers is getting them where you need them and getting them to stay. So the ability with a small gun and to have a tip that does rotate, you can really get any angle. And even in areas like a class two box, you can get this little tip and you can evenly disperse it. And I think it's a big, big advantage to have that small delivery tip. That's a notoriously difficult area to get to that that proximal box yeah. of a class two with any kind of precision and we're used to holding things this shape anyway for you know impression syringes and other things so i think it's a great delivery system to be able to do that the uh, fuji automix lc is very similar to the fuji 2 lc which yeah. is another gc product that many dentists are familiar with um, the automix lc is a little different in that it has a smaller particle size so that it actually polishes better. Uh, it releases more fluoride than the Fuji 2 LC ever did. And it's also radio opaque, which is nice. So uh, what are your thoughts on the radio opacity if you're gonna be using this in like an open sandwich technique for a direct composite? I think it's really important. So looking at radiographs um, over the years of class two composites, I think we've all had the challenge to figure out what could be uh, a more transparent liner and it, it resembles decay. So uh, having something radio opaque at that margin is very important, especially in like an open sandwich technique where we have a margin that's not on enamel, right. subgingival, and we're trying to see whether that, that margin is staying sealed. And so I think it's a great, um, a great product to have very opaque. You know, it's interesting you mentioned that in, in the CR newsletter this past June, June of 2018, the lead article was actually called the epidemic, Gordon used the word epidemic, the epidemic of cervical caries in the box form of class two direct composites. And they did a survey of a couple thousand dentists and 43% of them said they see recurrent decay in the bottom of the box of these composites on a, a regular basis. So it sounds like a high fluoride releasing product like this one would be great for the open sandwich technique. I think your, your standard really should be, when you have enamel and that proximal box margin, I think doing a direct composite is, is very um, predictable. Once we run out of enamel, then we're, we're in trouble. So that's where a product um, like the, the LC Auto Mix comes in and you can place that where you don't have enamel and be really certain that the solubility is gonna be very low, much lower than anything else we've seen in a while and you should be able to keep that marginal seal. The most common indications for this material are pediatric restorations, uh, class five restorations, using it as a base or a liner or using it as a crown buildup material. When do you find yourself reaching for this material? So I, I really like it as what we would call a base or the closed sandwich technique. So I have a real deep area, I'm worried about recurrent decay. Uh, I think it's a great product to use in that situation. I really like it on class fives. So I have a, 
pretty high percentage of my patient population are geriatrics. So we're seeing the xerostomia and the cervical decay that we see. So this is a really nice product for, for cervical decay, class five areas for me too. Now, while this material doesn't need any etching of enamel or dentin and doesn't require a primer or any kind of bonding agent, you can use it in conjunction with the GC cavity conditioner, and that will increase the bond strength of the material to the tooth. And so the cavity conditioner is a 20% polyacrylic acid, which removes the smear layer, which allows you to get that higher bond strength, mm -hmm. and then a 3% aluminum chloride hexahydrate to get rid of the chance of any post-operative sensitivity afterwards. And the amazing thing about how strong that bond is, is that even if you get salivary contamination of the tooth, prior to placing the material, if you use the cavity conditioner, you barely lose any of the bond strength. It goes from 13 megapascals down to about 10 megapascals. I can't think of the last time that we've had a material that bragged about its ability to be able to use uh, when you have salivary contamination. It's the opposite of zirconia, for example. Uh, how does that make you feel when you have a material that actually can work well if you've had some salivary contamination? So I think in the ideal world, um, we wouldn't have to worry about that. But it, those of us that have been practicing long enough, you're always fighting contamination. So um, I think most of the time we feel pretty good about it. But there's pedo cases or cases where your opening is limited or you're trying to have to rush through a procedure, that's really important. So a little bit of uh, flexibility when it comes to contamination issues is, is huge. Yeah, we pro in other words, we probably have more salivary contamination than we even know about, right? Sure. Even though you can't see it, it might still be occurring. So that right. works out really well. It's available in three shades, A1, A2, and A3. And I can tell you after spending 15 years at Glidewell Laboratories that the vast majority of crowns that dentists prescribe are A1, A2, and A3. So there's no need to have you know 16 Vita shades for this material. Which shade do you find yourself using the most? You know, I've used A2 and A3 in this product. I, um, I would probably um, default to an A2 in a base or um, an open or closed sandwich. In the class five areas, I've found that the A3 does blend quite well. So between A2 and A3, I think you're pretty much covered. One of the ways to be able to use this as a class five to get a really nice finish on it is to use the Fuji Coat LC. So once you've placed the restoration, you've light cured it, and then finished it, you put a thin coat of this on and, and cure it because glass ionomers and resin modified glass ionomers um, could be a little sensitive to contamination, salivary or even water sorption during those first 24 hours. Um, how do you find the surface of the material looks after you've used the Fuji Coat LC on it? The surface is nice without the Fuji Coat, but it does certainly add, um, it's a layer of protection, like you were saying. There are some um, maybe a little small porosities like in any um, glass onomer and adding that extra coat, it makes it look really nice and it gives you that sense of security knowing you're sealing the restoration off. I completely agree. And that'll about wrap it up for this edition of Inside Dentistry's Product Talk. On behalf of Dr. Frankie Scholl, myself and everybody here at Inside Dentistry, I wanna thank you for your time and your continued commitment to quality dentistry.